Welcome to Marketers Are Our Future, how to get them to choose Drupal. We're gonna be sitting in a panel type situation. Feel free to stay where you are, or if you want a better view, come on over this way, but you should be able to hear us if we get a little closer. I'm Kelly Delaney, I'm the Development Director at Drupal Association, so I actually work with partners, these people uh, from agencies, and we're, we do fundraising and partner marketing. And let me introduce our panel today. I'm joined by Rosie Gladden, Director of Marketing at ImageX. Hi, everyone. Jenna Van Ort, Director of Marketing at Aten Design. Aten Design, I said it. I knew, I was like, I'm gonna say it wrong. I said it wrong and right. And Annie Stone, Senior Digital Strategist at Phase Two. And I'm like, get my head up there. Uh, we'll have a Q&A at the end here. We'll leave a few minutes, five, 10 minutes, if anyone has questions to follow up, and we'll get started. Kind of a panel situation, I'll start questions, and uh, our panel here will answer them. Rosie, I'm gonna start with you. What okay. do you think is the most significant, significant barrier to marketers being aware of Drupal? I don't think I was meant to go first, but sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I like to just pick. Um, I would suggest that it's not necessarily a barrier, but I think in my opinion, marketers fall into kind of two camps. So they either have never heard of Drupal, mm -hmm. um, and my own experience was um, I joined ImageX five years ago. I heard about Drupal five years ago. That's kind of <laughs> my understanding, and I'd, I'd been through three or four web redesigns in that time, never heard of Drupal. Was very much um, looked for sector specification. So anyway, back to my original point. Um, I think they either have never heard of Drupal or Still, there's this preconceived idea that Drupal is for developers, you know, built for developers, for developers. It's clunky, potentially very expensive to create something, and ultimately, marketers can't use it for what they need, which, as we all know, is not necessarily the case. Um, so yeah, that's the barrier. Jenna, how about you? Sure. I. Um I started at Atten Design Group two years ago, and I also did not know what Drupal was when I started. Um, so I definitely think there is a big barrier um, for marketers to be aware of Drupal. Um, I see that the community is primarily made of developers, which is fantastic, but I think expanding the community to a more non-technical audience, more marketers, content editors, would just help um, generally expand awareness as well. I'd love to see more um, marketing content at Drupal cons and Drupal camps, more content about digital strategy, Drupal design, project management, things like that. Um, and I'd also love to see a better intersection of the Drupal community with existing marketing conferences like Digital Summit and some conferences that we get involved in at Atten, like Higher Ed Web and Nonprofit Technology Network. Yeah, I'll just hop in there. Um, I completely agree with uh, Jenna and Rosie, and um, I think one of the big barriers right now is just for marketers to understand what Drupal is. If you go to drupal.org, for a marketer, it's hard to understand what it is. You have to like actually go and search in the user guidelines to get a definition of what Drupal, Drupal is. So I would say that's like low hanging fruit to kind of help with awareness and understanding. Thank you. Next question. What are marketers looking for when they're evaluating a new CMS? And Annie, how about we start with you? Yeah. Um, my voice is a little weird today. Hopefully you guys can hear me. Um, so marketers are under a lot of pressure to drive business results. So speed to market is really important. Uh, flexibility to you know make sure that the CMS or the website is going to meet the marketers you know specific use cases is really important for marketers. Um, and because marketing strategies evolve a lot, so flexibility is really important. You need to be able to pivot, integrate with you know different Martech tools, um, and then privacy and security is also really important. Um, yeah, I would add to that. I think it might be controversial, but marketers don't necessarily care about the tech. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they exactly what Annie was saying. They want something that they can use for their goals, their objectives, and can ultimately grow with them and the organization. They don't want to be doing 
a redesign every three to five years, less so now, you know, we're kind of moving in such a fast paced environment. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> so yeah, something that flexible, scalable, sounds familiar, right? It's kind of everything Drupal has to offer really. I completely agree with that, Rosie. I tell my colleagues often that uh, marketers don't have loyalty to technology like developers do, so um, they're looking for things in a little bit of a different way. We at Atten work primarily with nonprofits and um, government entities who don't necessarily have huge teams or the opportunity to have in-house developers, so we consistently hear from them that their marketing teams are looking for a CMS that's easy to use and can streamline their content editing workflow. Um, so I think that's what we see most often coming from marketers. And I have a question about that. So when you're working with your nonprofit end users, who would you say is evaluating on the end user side? Are you talking to a lot of marketing folks over there too? At our prospective mm -hmm. clients? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, I think we talk, we talk to even at nonprofit um, organizations, we're talking to organization directors, not necessarily even marketers, who are just tasked with taking care of the website as well. So we're working with a variety of non-technical folks that have a variety of resources. That's good. That goes back to kind of what can Drupal.org do to make us the CMS of choice is have another audience for those end users that aren't marketers, but they're organizational leaders, but they don't, they can't get through all the technical language right away at the beginning. Exactly. Nice. Yeah. Okay. What are marketers trying to accomplish? Did I already say that one? Nope. <laughs> Listen. Yep, you're right. You <laughs> okay. What are marketers trying to accomplish with a CMS and a website? Annie, let's start with you again. Yeah. Um, so I, I think marketers, you know, from a very basic level are using websites to increase awareness of their brand. So, you know, SEO, for instance, is really important for them just to increase awareness on the internet. And in general, the website is just one of many digital touch points and channels that a marketer is using to try to influence their target audience down the marketing funnel to complete whatever that ultimate conversion is for that business. Go ahead, Annie. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Other Annie. <laughs> Annie. I've been, I've been called Rosie. worse. Um, <laughs> I would add to that, though, that the website is often like the nucleus of the ecosystem um, with them for marketers, sorry. So, you know, even, even looking at offline channels like events, um, you know, direct mail, there's going to be something on their website, QR code that's directing them to the website. And if that is not working well, everything else falls apart or can fall apart. So, yeah. Is there anything your agency is doing already to promote Drupal to sp prospective end users? Jenna. Yeah, um, so on the product side of things, we've heard the complaints of Drupal being so flexible and powerful, but again, difficult for content editors to use. So our agency built a drag and drop editing solution on top of layout paragraphs called Mercury Editor. And it's um, released on drupal.org, fully open source module that you can go check out yourself. Um, but we built it to lessen the learning curve for non-technical users. Um, and as a Drupal shop, we love Drupal, and we will take any and all opportunities to pitch Drupal to our prospective clients. Um, but again, this ease of use comes up when folks are not sold on any specific C CMS yet. Um, so in those conversations, we demo Mercury Editor for them, and I've heard responses to those demos along the lines of um, Drupal was out of the running until I saw this, and this is the WordPress style authoring experience I've been looking for, but with the power of Drupal. Um, so really excited to see what else we can do and promote uh, with Mercury Editor. Add to that. Um, so at ImageX, we also do some contributions in terms of like different modules to help with user experience like Bootstrap Layout Builder and 
um, as a blocks module as well. Um, but also just actively targeting non-Drupal users and trying to kind of widen the, the net um, ultimately of that of the product and the knowledge and you know everything all three of us do it you know we're competing agencies but we're all <laughs> sat on this panel saying the same thing we're all trying to broaden the reach and the growth of Drupal as a as a um, CMS option of choice yeah I'll just add from from my role as a digital strategist, I often come to our clients sort of from a tech agnostic perspective and sort of talk to them about their business goals and their technical requirements. But often what I do recommend is Drupal, and especially when I'm talking to marketers, it's because of the flexibility and the fact that they can integrate with their existing MarTech stack and they're not necessarily locked into a suite of tools like Adobe. So um, I just wanted to add that. And you have a good perspective. She was actually the former director of marketing at Phase Two, so that's pretty helpful for your new <laughs> yeah. role. Okay. I'm the DA. And she used to work for the DA. That's true. <laughs> All of it. <laughs> she, um, how can we connect the dots between promoting Drupal and helping the Drupal Association promote Drupal efficiently? What advice do you have for the DA in Drupal.org as marketers? Let's see. Annie, go ahead. Actually, Me. okay. Yes. Uh, yeah, I think there are a lot of uh, opportunities that um, we could all contribute to. I think um, one thing I, I mentioned earlier was just in terms of increasing awareness, like thinking about the SEO strategy and diversifying some of the, the ways that we describe Drupal um, rather than just content management system. Maybe we talk mm -hmm. about websites a little bit more mm -hmm. <laughs> or digital experience platforms, you know, just sort of exploring that keyword strategy. Um, and then in terms of the positioning on Drupal.org, um, and there's actually been a ton of work over the years done for this and talking about it in different ways on Drupal.org, so I wanted to acknowledge that, but <clears throat> making it a little bit more clear to understand what it is and how it's going to benefit a marketer or drive results. Um, and then I think there's an opportunity to optimize the the marketplace for marketers as well. I think some of, you know, for instance, the, the filters are so detailed and technical that a marketer might look at the filters for options of like how to, you know, view different agencies and be like, this is not for me. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know if you guys have any thoughts. Yeah, I have two, two things. Um, so one, exactly like Annie said, there's lots of work being done already in the Promote Drupal um, committees and things. So uh, I've been on the evaluator committee for 18 months now. Um, we're helping look at um, Drupal.org redesign. We are kind of building in this extra user persona. And I think at the community summit, Suzanne is going to do a session with maybe some sneak peeks of design. So um, go and have a look at those. But then there's also this element of storytelling. And I think there's a real lack at the minute. And I think it was echoed this morning, um, Tim mentioned uh, before the Dries note about, you know, we're not telling the story to the end users necessarily in the best way. So agencies, other partners, there's so much content out there. So using existing content, repurposing, and there's already a level happening, um, but what more can be done to kind of pull together all those resources and just, ex <laughs> for want of a better phrase, just expose them further and get the reach um, further. I love what both of you guys have said so far. Um, Atten is proud to be an agency partner of the Drupal Association Agency Program, and we've seen a lot of success from that. I'd love to see more success from that. I'd love to see more opportunities as a part of that partnership marketing program um, that kind of integrate everything that Rosie and Annie have already said. I'd love more opportunities for different types of content exposure on Drupal.org. And um, again, would like to see just a, a little bit more marketing friendly agency page that tells the full story of what we do outside of just our contributions to the project. 
Rosie, you brought up the Promote Drupal um, com uh, committee. I just wanted to ask, are all the folks on that, would you say they're all marketer focused or marketing backgrounds, or are there some people on there that are from other walks of the Drupal community? There's a real mix. So I would say maybe 50 50. Mm -hmm. um, so Jenna has just joined as well. So oh, nice. um, more marketers. I think if, you know, at your organizations or you know, people in your own ecosystems, if there are non-technical people with marketing expertise, um, event management expertise, like those opportunities, I know we've talked about them before at different events, but they're maybe not, I think I wasn't sure how to get involved and um, I filled in a form and it just, you know, thankfully people kind of told yeah. me what to do. Um, but yeah, there's so much, like even on the drupal.org site, it can only move forward as quickly as the amount of volunteers and the amount mm -hmm. of um, people contributing and, you know, looking at the in information architecture, looking at the metadata, looking at the content, there's so much mm -hmm. that everyone knows goes into building and redesigning a site and there are designs and now it's how do we get that to, you know, look at the size of Drupal.org, how, yeah. how do we get all of that into this kind of looks great, um, you know, package. Thank you. Okay, uh, what more can the Drupal community be doing to help promote Drupal and increase its awareness? And Jenna, how about we start with you? Sure. I'd love to see um, more of an infrastructure for creating both the product that the marketing non-technical folks are looking for, the decision makers, of course, and then also um, an infrastructure for creating the messaging that resonates best with marketers. I was really excited to hear um, Dries talk about this project browser that's coming out. Um, that sounds like a good opportunity to spotlight new innovations. And I'd love to see how that looks and to see if it is speaking to a marketing audience and how it's distilling which audience is most interested in which innovation. Um, Within that infrastructure, I'd love to see some type of umbrella messaging that all agencies can leverage and utilize within our own marketing that are maybe speaking points of why Drupal is the CMS for marketers to choose. I That would make my job a whole lot easier. I'm realizing how tough it is to translate all of the wonderful solutions we're coming up with um, when creating Drupal websites to marketers in a way that resonates with them. Um, I'd love to see some type of cohesive, consistent messaging come from the top that um, I can use within my own job. And I think it, I think all agencies would be happy to share that, even though, again, we're competing. <laughs> yeah, and I would just say that um, that would really help like, stop having the kind of um, misunderstandings that Annie mentioned at the beginning. like. We're all saying ever so slightly different things because there isn't this cohesive, but we're all trying to get to the same point and um, to the same people. So mm -hmm. yeah, if we had cohesiveness, yeah. that'd be great. I, you go. Okay. <laughs> I just had one other thought. Um, I, I think it would be really cool if we could all like, you know, in the spirit of open source, pull together to put together like a user research project where we really go out there and talk to marketers and and sort of address like what are the gaps right now what are the future opportunities and because um, I think any like digital strategy that Drupal Association might want to uh, embark on really has to be founded in that that user research Thank you. That was all very good. And I do just want to recognize how it, how fun it is. You all are from different organizations, but you're right. Um, together, we can make Drupal the CMS of choice. Um, we're, there's, enough in, there's enough in the community for all of us because Drupal is huge and it's growing and it's going to need all of the community <laughs> to move forward. Okay. Jenna, this is for you. How do you talk to de developers in Atten about changing, sh changing shift in the market? Yeah, this is a conversation I have often. Uh, when I first started at Atten Design Group, our target audience was definitely the technical Drupal developer, and that had worked for them for 20 years. They brought me on in a new marketing position to help grow the agency, and when I started, we dug into all of our target 
audience is and who they should be. And I found a big gap in the messaging and marketing to non-technical marketers. So I assured the developers in my team, including my boss, who's a developer, that we should not stop what we were doing before. We should not stop embracing the Drupal developer community that has um, been such a strong source of business for us. And we are really proud to be a part of this really strong developer community. But we do need to expand our messaging to expand our audience in general. And I think that applies to the community as a whole, um, not just my agency. Um, I think all three of us agree that we don't want anything to change with the way that um, the, Drup the Drupal community communicates with developers. We just want to see a bigger audience and a more expanded audience. Also... As I think we all know, Drupal developers don't need to be sold on Drupal. They love it. Um, but again, marketers do need to be sold on that. So need to um, shift the priority for that market. Nice. Rosie, how could developers specifically help marketers understand the Drupal CMS platform better? I, I didn't answer this one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so ultimately, developers can do what we cannot. Like, we, none of us can develop. We don't have the skills. We don't have the knowledge. You know, <laughs> we have other other skills, I assure you. Um, but yeah, so demos. You know, visualizing what we're trying to achieve. Like helping us distill that very technical information. Um, I think Jenna mentioned it earlier into messaging that we can. Uh, put to non-technical folk. So that may not be necessarily marketers. It might be, um, you know, C-suite in some of the smaller orgs and things like that. So, yeah, just resources and be kind of open to the pleas of your, your marketing friends, I suppose, mm. for kind of help in, in building those resources to then be utilized across the community. What do other competitors of Drupal do that Drupal could use as inspiration? Annie? Yeah, so this is definitely tough, right? Because Drupal Association or like the Drupal.org website has so many audiences. So it's tough to kind of compare apples to apples. But if you look at the site of, uh, you know, Adobe, Sitecore, even Optimizely, they are positioning a product and their product is positioning positioned to drive business results for their audience <laughs> and we're just not doing that for drupal so i think we should try to you know really think about how we might do that for for drupal maybe there's a micro site i don't know some way to position it that way because um, i think that that would make a big difference Yeah, I think I'm kind of a broken record at this point, but <laughs> other other CMSs are easy to use. And um, I think Drupal has that reputation of being tough for non-technical users. So I'm excited to um, work with the community and see how we can continue to promote Mercury Editor and continue to innovate and make it better. Can I add? Yeah, I uh, just had a thought. Um, I wonder whether at the DA level as well there's opportunities to kind of partner with um, organizations on the kind of edge of the sphere, effectively. So, you know, CRM systems, um, you know, marketing automation systems, are there places that in the way that we work with partners within the community, can we do it with partners outside of the community and not just at agency level? Maybe. I don't know. I like it. I can handle that. So this is like a really good start conversation. So um, the Drupal Association and our strategic plan that's coming out, that's going to be uh, t like for the next three years. Tim Doyle briefly touched on it today. He said innovation, philanthropy, and marketing. So we will definitely be making plans, all of these ideas that you all were saying, for the next three years to make Drupal the CMS of choice um, and get some product marketing behind it, all those great ideas you all had. And um, let's see, let me get into, oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Good question. 
What's one way to accomplish that from your perspective as a marketer to make C make Drupal the CMS of choice? Maybe the sum up the things you've all said, like maybe the first thing we can all do at Drupal.org or at your agencies to help promote Drupal. Um, I think I have a lot of ideas here. I'd like to see first, I'd love to see if the Drupal Association could conduct that user research Annie was talking about to determine exactly how Drupal excels for marketers and then distill that into messaging that can really resonate uh, to the marketing audience that, again, the entire community can adopt, whether it's me as an agency marketer, my colleagues at my agency, hosting providers, um, any anybody else inside of the community, if we can all just share again, share that messaging. Um, I was just thinking, um, you know, word of mouth has always been the strongest thing for for Drupal and really for anything that you're marketing. Um, and so if we think about what that means digitally, I think like video testimonials from marketers from all across industries would be really powerful to promote. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, similar to that is kind of, it's that storytelling piece. Um, I think twofold, so uh, Dries mentioned at Portland, like he changed the phrase to ambitious site builders, reiterated today. Um, in my mind, that's not always somebody like pulling the coding. It's quite often, you know, I think we're ambitious site builders, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> like I, I expect a lot from my website and my team will tell, <laughs> tell you that I do. Um, but um, ultimately, to connect that piece to the end user, there's that lack of story and you know there's all these impactful brands that are on Drupal we we hear about them within the community you know NASA Pfizer my favorite the royal family but you know, <laughs> we'll talk about that later um, but how are those being used outside of these events so that I think Acquia did a video for DrupalCon Prague I've not seen it since like um, we could use that in so many ways and it's just building the pool of resources and having those open to anyone that wants to use them and you know we in theory could have the same video on both of us or all three of our sites and that could be pulling together I, I don't know yeah. yeah that's amazing well thank you you three we um have left it open now we've got our official questions done but we wanted to open it to our audience to see if we can have a discussion on marketing or if anyone had questions to we th that we could um riff off of from what we spoke <laughs> about I can also talk more about Drupal Association from our side. These ideas are so good. As you know, actually maybe you don't know, our team is really small, so we have this wonderful Promote Drupal organization, and I encourage people, if they're interested in marketing, to get, a, to get um, in touch with them. Uh, Rosie, can you t remember off the top of your head how... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you can contact me and I'll, I'll figure out. <laughs> I'm sorry, Rosie. I know, I'm just gonna look that up. I'm in the Drupal Slack, so. Time yeah, time. but um, so the storytelling is a big one. We are, our engineering team is so great and we work with them a lot, but talk about ambitious site builders. When I think about how the marketers can kind of come into helping the development of um, websites, it's definitely, the hard part on my side is the storytelling that I assist with Drupal.org, and it's working so closely with engineers. And I wanna know, do your organizations have a developer advocate that kind of talks to you about Drupal, or is it just by yourselves? Let's see, anyone, is there developer advocates that like work with Drupal, or they, the de developer advocates like work with marketing? Even you all, like, so I was thinking, so these are like brainstorm things. So sometimes when I'm talking to an organization that has a developer advocate that's specifically like my Drupal contact, oftentimes I get on a call with them in marketing. And so they're talk we're talking about like a case study. Case studies are really great on Drupal.org. It's for end users to get the word out, but, and it's 
developers who are doing these projects, but then it's marketers who are um, doing these case studies. So I have a question for you all. If you're developing a case study, do you work with your developer teams on doing that or who writes those and things like that? If they respond to me. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so it's myself and my team and we will pull information from developers, but we will head up what's needed and we will ultimately either kind of interview them for 10, 15 minutes or just ask them to give us some bullets and then we'll put it all together and get them to review. So you're looking at it effectively. That's <laughs> awesome, okay. Yeah, uh, same. I, I found when writing case studies um, lately, I've been focusing more on the strategy and design side and then I ask my, my developers to give me the high level highlights of what went down and then I have to ask them a lot of follow-up questions because I don't understand what they're talking about um, but we're I think it gets better every time I'm I'm learning what questions to ask them and learning what um, what maybe will resonate best to marketers when developing those case studies as far as the actual code and Drupal -y part goes I would say yeah, yeah. I love that question. Um, I think, yes, we do. We, we have a lot of really good technical Drupal content, mostly for any in-house developers at prospective clients. And I've kind of argued with folks sometimes to say like, hey, this particular proposal isn't going to developers, it's going to marketers, and they will not understand what this means. And they've pushed back and said, but it makes us sound really good. So I don't have any like f data around if that works or not, because I always kind of use the rule of thumb, if I don't understand something, other marketers probably won't either. Um, I'd love to hear y'all's perspective. Yeah. Um, so if you check out the ImageX website, if you'd like to, um, there's very little technical content on there. Um, so all of our case studies, ultimately, we want a prospect to come to our website and recognize themselves in terms of the types of projects, the types of organization, the verticals. Ideally, they would then kind of follow the buyer journey and the technical piece comes in when they meet with our solution architects, meet with our sales team, and then they delve into the technical pieces and we'll do a more technical proposal. So from my perspective, um, if there's a, a bit in terms of statistics and kind of what was the actual um, kind of a provable ROI on those projects and they might go into some technical pieces, but unless it's out of the ordinary, we made this kind of crazy in innovative um, module just for this organization, then it's very limited in what we would do. I think that's also an interesting question. So I was talking to a client recently who, uh, University of Limerick is on Drupal, and I was talking to the um, person, the developer who is running it at University of Limerick, and they are a Drupal developer from, they used to work for an agency. So when they were evaluating what they should do to their website w moving forward, they were on Drupal uh, 7. They were evaluating if they should stay with Drupal or go to another site. So that, though, is one instance where a technical case study would be beneficial. So I think when folks don't know anything about Drupal and their marketers or their evaluators, having one that's not too technical could be really helpful, but there's definitely a case for some technical ones when the in-house person has the uh, experience to know know what Drupal is and read about it. So, And as you notice, I mean, we were kind of uh, touching on it. Drupal.org is very developer fo focused. So folks that do go there, it's like Drupal.org needs a little bit more marketing and user content, but then maybe agency websites may need a little technical area. I don't know. Could be both. I think it, it depends what you're selling. <laughs> um, if you're selling uh, Drupal expertise, it may make sense to have that kind of um, content if you're selling you know driving uh 
revenue, (laughs) then you're going to have different services that you're positioning and different skills and things like that. Does anyone else have a topic that we should discuss at length? That's okay if you don't. Often, yeah. What would, um, or what would be the alternative to that, I guess? That's kind of where alternative to, like, so a like different CMS? Like, what, 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 yeah, what would be the Often Sitecore, okay. Adobe, Optimizely, um, yeah, pretty much any other, like, digital experience platform yeah. is sort of lined up against Drupal. And then, like, we often do, like, um, a market assessment and kind of get the client's technical requirements, business requirements, and then like line up the solutions and which one's gonna fit best. And you know, there's gonna be pros and cons with all of these. So it's what's the best fit for the organization? What can they live without? What do they really need? And and we kind of come to a decision there. You've hit it on the head. I mean, we've we've been in business 25 years. I don't think we've ever put anything um, in any of our proposals or conversations with clients about using Drupal for the power of marketing, um, just yeah. the SEO in general. But um, yeah, that's, thank you for that comment. Sure. <laughs> Oh yeah, Word, WordPress as well. I've, we generally work with uh, at Phase Two larger organizations, which still sometimes use WordPress for smaller sites and things like that. But yeah, absolutely. I think Jeff had a question too. Yeah. So this morning, the the Pittsburgh uh, thing. I was just curious what the marketers thought in terms of how how those pitches were presented um, vis-a-vis yeah. this other conversation. Yeah. Mm. I, full transparency, only saw the first one, and I le- I didn't leave because of this. I had something <laughs> else I needed to do, but I left thinking, wow, I have absolutely no idea what that was. <laughs> and, like, I've, of course, heard the language in, in my agency, but if, if someone tried to use that to pitch Drupal to a marketer, they would absolutely not resonate. Yeah. Um, do you mean like specifically how they were presented or do you mean the content itself? I mean more just um, were, were they technical presentations or marketing presentations? I think they were perfect for the use case Yeah, absolutely. is what I would yeah. say. And I think it was interesting to see, I guess, maybe th- three, or yeah, three out of four um, were something that would help uh, the marketer with Drupal. So, you know, Gutenberg, Layout, build, layout Builder, yeah, that was right. right. Um, <laughs> and then Amy, Amy um, the mentoring. So on a much different level, like the more mentoring, then ultimately the more kind of non-technical people are coming in as well. Um, and then there were, again, full transparency. I sat next to my CTO, had to ask him what a couple of the things were. So. There was a real mix, and I'm really intrigued to see what the other, quick math, 28 um, videos are going to be um, to see exactly that. You know, how many are helping the kind of user experience, the UX side of, of um, Drupal, and how many are more really technical. Um, and I just wouldn't have a clue <laughs> what they are. Along that lines, I would say also with that, there could have been marketers who entered that contest and I didn't even consider it. It was potentially part of the pitch of, for all of us, didn't even, we were just thinking, you know, when we think innovation, we definitely want to innovate Drupal, but there's marketing to be innovated there to, for the, uh, to choose them as a uh, CMS of platform of choice. Anyways, I'd be, it's interesting now just to reconsider that maybe we missed the boat, but next year, pitch land 2024, maybe. (laughs) Yes.
Yeah, I think I'm, you know, I'm going to slightly backtrack. We do care, like, <laughs> ultimately. Um, but what we care about is the functionality, you know, the ease of use. Is it going to make our lives harder, ultimately? Are we going to have to ask a dev for every single change of a color or, like, change a banner? You know, I've had that in a past life, and it was not pretty. Um, but in terms of the, the tech stack, you know, I think that applies to everything. So, you know, things like CRMs, Salesforce has the ultimate, um, you know, market share. Doesn't necessarily mean it's the best product, but it's probably sold the best. Um, so realistically, when certainly I approach any tech, you've got to evaluate the use case you know, what's my goal, what's my objective, and as, is that going to make my life easier or is it going to make my life harder? And then I, I would maybe depend on um, somebody in my more technical team for advice. But, and I think this is the whole point of this session, I'm the decision maker. So they can give me advice and I can take that on. But if I don't really like the way it kind of feels when I'm using it, I'm probably not going to use it. So does that answer your question? I think it's a blend. So um, depending on the size of organization that we work with, some of them don't have technical people at all. Um, and then you have the other end of the spectrum where we become kind of an arm of their dev team. And actually, those organizations have maybe already decided what they want to use, or um, they come to us with more of a strategic overview. And then, um, kind of similar to what Annie was saying, we help them recognize that Drupal is a great fit. Um, and then, yeah, they have technical people. So it's this isn't kind of everything. This is maybe just the point that the decision maker has changed in a lot of cases. Um, and yes, they may have a technical person that can help them. But I think in our experience, because we're agencies, somebody needs more resource if they're coming to us. So it, you know, it's maybe a slightly smaller view, but um, yeah. So. Yeah, I, I would just add, I think it was, it's a really great point. Um, I think uh, Drupal, when you're building like a large CMS platform, there's so much complexity and nuance and uh, sort of abstraction when you're talking about the value of like, you know, the modules that you're building. And I think from that perspective, it's like a, a marketer is going to be like, okay, but when is it going to be done? <laughs> so I think that's what we're like, yeah. um, you know, when, when we were saying we don't tech care about the technology. We just have to drive those business results, but it's not that we don't care and we need it to work. And in that case, we really do care about the technology. Um, and I, I think another thing is like we we need all of our MarTech stack to work together. And um, for the data, I think marketers care a lot about the data and having that feed through all the systems to be able to measure the impact of what we're doing on these systems. Um, you know, to prove our, our success and our efficacy and our value.
if you talk to any of the, you know, some of the, the, the companies, and I've had demos from those companies in the past, it becomes very complex to have all those systems tied together. And so that simplicity of, of, of putting it together and building it at scale, I think is really important. Mm -hmm. That's a really important point. And I, I just brought this up. I'm a full stack engineer who works in the marketing and communications mm. department. So Just I your triple advocate. <laughs> But I think it, I think it is working towards that though. And I think it's like even in the five years I've been in the Drupal community, it's, you know, yeah, head and shoulders. I feel that's a technical question. <laughs> no, I, I think Drupal is fairly flexible. Yeah. I think you could absolutely use it for that, yeah. I would say though, at, even at the Drupal Association, there are some instances where Drupal isn't the um, platform of choice. So when we're, we have to migrate, you know, all the end of life seven away from something's happening, it's kind of a big deal. And there might be this like one small organization and they have like a very limited amount of needs. And when they might, maybe migration isn't the best for them and it might be WordPress or something like that, I would say. I don't know if that's kind of what you were asking a little bit there, but um, we have a few more minutes left. Does anyone have any last minute questions for the panel? I love this conversation you all were involved in. I want to thank you all for coming. That was really wonderful to chat. And thank you for the panelists. I appreciate it. Thank you, Kelly.